Very, hey, congratulations on um, congratulations on the release of uh, Top Secret Millennium Films. You did a great job. We're very uh, pleased with that. Well, you should be. The whole cast, the whole crew did a great job on that film. Um, now you play the computer hacker uh, Wally. Who um, tell us a bit about your character? I, uh, so Wally is a 20-something autistic hacker. Um, he doesn't really fit in anywhere in the world apart from um, with his three friends um, who uh, in the same um, sense don't feel like they fit in anywhere in the modern day world. Um, they all have different ethnic backgrounds and I think um, the um, hustle and bustle of London has been a bit much for them. So um in a one weird way, they found each other and they found their um, love for uh, technology and um, then social media and this modern age of everything being public, but nothing being public at the same time. Um, the secrets that we are not told and then the things we are told to hide the secrets, that distraction that the media do to keep us from the real facts of life. Um, Max heads up the group. Uh, she's the the brains behind it. Uh, she does her online shares, her Bitcoin and things like that, and stocks. Um, and then there's Sanjeev. He's a, a kid who just wants to be feel like he fits in somewhere. He he's funny. He's good with technology. Um, he's always taking things apart. He's the kind of person that buys a brand new phone and then takes it apart to see how it works and puts it back together again. Uh, he's Wally's like confidant. They're probably the they're Wally's best friends, probably Sanjeev in that group. He understands him a bit more than the others. And then there's Monique, who's who's a socialite on the internet, but completely private in person. So what you see on her Instagram and what you see on her Facebook and Twitter and other social medias is not what you see from would not what you would see if you were looking at her personally. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, and Wally kind of just brings the whole group together. He's high, highly intelligent um, hacker. His computer skills are second to none. Um, and he's been trying for months, maybe even years, to get into a big security system like the NSA, like the Pentagon, like um, MI5, something like that. And then suddenly when we join them, he gets that breakthrough moment where he finally gets through and that starts the story of this manhunt for this mysterious hacker in London who's managed to open the puzzle palace as it were and uh, reveal the secrets. Awesome. Well, great work. The movie in it, it, it is a short film, but you're able to set up all those characters and uh, you can tell that the way they built it, the, your character has their respect, but they're also protective of him. Yes. Um, which I... I always said, like, ironically, on set, I was one of the oldest actors, um, but Wally is one of the youngest members of the group. Um, so I think they see him as a little brother that might need protecting. Um, and none of them know Wally's background, where he comes from, what his home life's like. All they know is the Wally that they get in the den in front of the computer with his stammer, with his awkward um, habits and things that he does. Um, and Wally's kept his personal life very separate from the, the person that they know. Mm. So there's a lot of depth to Wally that was fun for me to um, explore when we were making it. Um, Humphrey Pittman, a director, pulled me to, to one side and said to me, this is what Wally's background is. No one else on the set knows it but me and you. Use it. And I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. So no. I had these um, internal monologues and these places that Wally had come from. I, Stanislavski would refer to it as um, like his before time, like before you step on the stage and, and where you're going is like your after time. And so I knew where Wally had come from, what his background was. Um, but no one else did. So I got I got to play. I had a little secret like constantly, which was nice. And I think Humphrey did a very good job with all of us and did the same thing. He pulled us to one side every now and again would say, right, um, this is what, you know, no one else knows it. Use it. 
So you, you get that that depth of those characters is because when when you and I talk and have a conversation or with groups of friends, we've always got something going on subconsciously that we're thinking about, whether it be money or home or what we want for dinner. There's always something else going on. So to be told by direct, like this is what you're thinking about, to think about it and then to have to then do your dialogue normally and have that go on the background. It was really nice to be allowed to play with such a depth of character in such a short film. Um, like you said, it is a short film. And the idea was to set up each character so that once you finish watching it, you go, I really want to know more about Max. I really want to know more about Monique. You want to know more about all those characters. Um, and we've said from day one when we started filming it, um, it would be a great feature film um, to be extended into a feature film. And then we come to the conclusion late into the filming that actually, how good would it be if it was an, an episodic series that followed the day in the life of Wally, for example, then followed the day in the life of Sanjeev. And then they come together in their little moments of um, togetherness and their friendship. But you learn about each individual character, which would lead you up to the point of the episode we've seen. And then where they go from there and are they really arrested? Are they actually going to state prison? Like in the United States, definitely, if you get caught trying to hack into something like the White House or the Pentagon, you get employed. You don't go to prison. And there was a kid a couple of years ago who got caught trying to hack into uh, Guantanamo Bay and he got employed by um, by the uh, American government. And it's the same in the UK. If you have that kind of skill base, you're wasted behind bars. They'd rather put it to use. So that'd be interest. It'd be interesting to see where those characters go next, because they're all very talented, all very skillful, and they know a lot of things they shouldn't know. And as we see at the end, Max has shared some of what they know with the internet, but promised the internet that there will be more if they're not set free or let go or whatever. So I think it leaves that air of mystery, that, that typical Charles Dickens cliffhanger that keeps you going, you know? Right. Well, you guys did a fantastic job and you do deliver the depth of that character. Well done. Yeah. Uh, hey, and uh, I know that you uh, went to the, um, uh, Arch University of uh, Bournemouth, right? Bournemouth. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what was the uh, training like there? Because now I highly respect there are a number of actors who haven't gone to drama school and you can tell they went over, they can, you know, they develop skills that win over critics and you can tell. And each drama school has their own sort of niche as to what they cultivate. Yeah. Uh, how was it at, at, at um, um, I think the the beauty of the arts university is um, they don't try and turn you into another one of their students. Um, I feel like there are some prestigious drama schools, which we will leave nameless. Um, you know, I don't want to upset anybody, but I feel like there are some prestigious drama schools that turn you into one of their students and you can see them on stage and screen and you can say, ah, oh, that person, they trained at that place because they do it this way. They talk this way. They, they these are the skills they have. Um, but what the arts university of Bournemouth did so well was, um, they got to know who I was as a person. And, um, and I was told once by a, a very, um, a, a very uh, well-known actor who sat me down, we we're talking about it, and he said, there's a few things you need to know in life. Um, anyone can act. He said, anyone can act. He said, I could give that lady in the chair a monologue and she could stand up on that, um, that table and read it. And that would be acting. He's like, but not everyone can uh, deliver human connection and feeling. He said, only good actors deliver human connection. And, and to deliver human connection, you have to know who you are yourself as a performer, as an artist, as an actor. Because if there's not a little part of you in every performance you give, then it feels like a lie. Mm. If I'm sad, I want it to be a little part of me that that sees that sadness. If I'm excited, I want it to be a little part of Ryan that's excited, that just emulates through these characters. And what the arts university did was they got to know me as an actor and as a person. And then they teach you how to use all of your experiences, good and bad, to regurgitate them into these beautiful characters, to sculpt them into characters, 
where they're based in you in truth in honesty and that was the that was like the the pyramid of things we were told to do as actors be honest be truthful and react and i was told by doug cockle who is famously the voice of the witcher um and who was my voice teacher while i was there and my uh taught me some shakespeare as well he told us that the best acting is reacting it's it's you could have a thousand lines in a play that doesn't make you the best actor it's that one actor that has one line that's delivered with such truth and honesty with such human connection that when you finish that line that monologue the whole room is laughing or silent or in a moment they felt something um and i got to work with directors from outside of the arts university um famously uh uh david glass who i got to work with on charles dickens bleak house and he does wonderful things all over the world with all of his projects and the ensemble which i was an honor to be part of and he said to us, it's the actor's job to offend. It's the actor's job to to offend the unoffendable. To, it's the actor's job to make the, com the most comfortable person in the room feel uncomfortable. It's the actor's job to remind everybody that they are human and they have all these human emotions. And that uh, just because you're the CEO of a corporation and you've got all money is your whole life doesn't mean that your human connection isn't as, import as important as the money in your bank account. And I think acting, it took me a long time to realize it was, it, I had to learn it's a service. It's not, it's not for me. I don't step out on that stage to perform for myself. I love it, of course, I wouldn't do it, but it's for everyone watching. It's for those people that are sat up in the top row that have paid 75 pounds a ticket that can only just about see my face. They have to have the same experience as the person sat in the front row who's paid a 275 pounds a ticket. And they have to leave there, draw their own opinions, have their own feeling and their own satisfaction from what they've seen. But it's not about me. It's a service to them. And I learned that probably the arts university honed it into me. They really beat that into me and, and all the actors there. It's about it's about giving and giving and giving. And then and then you can take away from other people's reactions. Acting is reacting. You take away from what you give. Um, but I remember when I was doing uh, Midsummer Night's Dream at uh, the Arc Theatre in Trowbridge and I was about 17 years old. We'd finished the second show. I came off, I played Nick Bottom. I came off and this bloke came up to me in the bar in his late 40s and he said, um, I just want to say thank you for tonight. I said, oh, I'm honoured. I Like, thank you so much. Um, can I ask why? He said, um, well, I don't want to get into details, but like I've been having a really bad time at home. My wife's been sick and... Um, you know, we're having some troubles with my kids they're acting up and told me a bit about his life and how of a rough time he was having. And I think the show ran for two hours and 40 minutes with an interval. And he said to me, in the last three hours, I've not laughed that much in the last three years. And then that was it for me as an actor. That was my that was it. That was, that was the moment, the 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 epiphany, the moment, the light bulb moment where I went, oh my God, I'm not up here because look at me, I can do this. I can put on a silly accent and you can all laugh at me. I'm up here because that gentleman who's having a really bad time at home has just taken two and a half hours of his day and that's put him in, away from the world, escapism, uh, taken him away from that horrible situation that he's in through no fault of his own. And, and as an actor, that I, I, I'm allowed to do that for people and in a climate at the moment with COVID and everything going on, I think we need that more than anything else is that escapism to be able to turn on the TV and watch our favorite film and forget about the world, to be able to book to go see a theater show and sit there for three hours and forget what's going on and, and escape from it all. And that's what the Arts University was, it was all about, was about us being serviceable actors to the audience for us taking people away from those horrible moments and making them feel something that wasn't just every day it wasn't something that they could just get by opening a newspaper or getting on the tube it was something they had to experience and 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 that was their that was their motto almost their grounding truth honesty and reacting human connection and that i think the actors that come out of there um personally are some of the most um human actors they're not robotic they know they, they they have a sense of emotion a depth of emotion they understand what it means to see someone cry to see someone on that point of 
despair, that point of there's no looking back. And they know what it's like to be at that absolute point of elation and excitement. And that was and that was taught to us through many talented tutors and many different studies of um, Sarzaski and Brecht and, you know, Maya Hold and all those kind of people. But also it was about us as an actor. And the question wasn't, oh, um, Tom Cruise does it like this. So you should do it like this. The question was like, this is how the industry does it. Now do it your way. And it was a collaboration like this. It's a whole the whole university has got a film department, a TV department, animation, model making, costume design. Like you could put a whole production on it. Well, we did. We put whole productions on with the whole university and everybody involved was a student, but of the highest caliber. And um, and it is about collaboration. It's about being able to approach a director and say, I really like this character. I want to try this. Or or this isn't working. What about this? And and it's that collaboration and with Top Secret and Humphrey uh, specifically, we were able to, he'd ask us all the time, is that okay for you? Did you like that? Do you want to watch it back? Do you want to try it again? Like, I'm happy with it. Are you happy with it? And I think for, to make the best work, collaboration is where it has to be. And the Arch University taught me all of those things, truth, human connection, collaboration, the ability to be selfless in what I do as an actor so that other people can enjoy m- my my abilities and what i've been taught excellent well it it certainly pays off and uh i think it it matches your temperament as uh, temperaments kind of a run it matches your skill set as a person and an, and an actor that type of education was like a perfect match yeah so it it, it paid off nicely and uh, you mentioned shakespeare i know that that's some of the demo re- reels at your uh, IMDb page, which I'll share a link to. But I want to thank you uh, for your, uh, you know, for your time and uh, congratulations on the release of that. That is uh, great work. Yeah. I also want to mention uh, it, it was your work with Alan Howard for your headshots recently. Mm-hmm. I recommended them to um, Jack him to Jack Sharkey uh, for for his headshots because. Uh, um, yours always come out great, but you did really great work with him. So he's a was, very yeah. Was he good to work with? A very talented photographer. Um, again, he he loves his work, and we. I mean, I had hundreds of headshots, like hundreds and hundreds that we took, and you have to take that down to four. Um, sometimes less. Um, I I I I took it down to four. And uh, but he just captures something in you. He makes you feel relaxed. Like I got there, we had a cup of tea, we had a chat. Like I just finished watching um, uh, Rocket Man on the on the train in to London that day, and I was talking to him. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I, I love um, Elton John. Like he's one of my favorite artists. Have you seen it yet?" And, uh, so we had the the soundtrack on in the background, and then I took a series of outfits like you do, and. And we talked about it and I said to him, like, my, my outdoor stuff that we did last year was or the year before was two years ago was quite serious. I wanted something a little bit more characteristic, a little bit more commercial friendly. And he shoots beautifully in it looks cinematic. Like, um, I think one of my personal favorites of mine is the black and white headshot where I look almost angry off to the camera, you know, and it, he just catches that that moment um, wonderfully. And and I talked to him about my love of Shakespeare. And I said, you know, Shakespeare's one of my biggest dreams. The RSC would be like the ice and like tech cape for me to perform there and be part of that company. And he's like, oh, we'll get some headshots that, that we can see Shakespearean characters in. And he was like, oh, who are your favorites? And so we were talking about that. And he's like, oh yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I, I can, I can, yeah, I, I know what Hamlet's like. I know what Macbeth's like and, and these characters. And then, so it was, he was like, play the characters, like, if you want to, do some dialogue. And then he just took picture after picture after picture. And there was some where I'm pulling stupid faces. And there's other ones where you get just the moment right and that emotion comes across. But, yeah, he, he just allowed me to talk and act and discuss. And, and, and it was a lot of it was me delivering monologues and things that I had memorized um, while he was taking pictures because... By accident, when actors do anything, when they tell a story or talk, we pull facial expressions and everything is very um, 
uh, out there and and uh, and you can see it immediately. So you're just like, yeah, if that works for you, and it was great because it wasn't just to stand there and pose, pull a face. Like I, I can't do that as a person. I cannot pose for a picture. I feel so uncomfortable. I can't smile. So for him to be like, oh yeah, just do some acting and I'll take pictures of it. It was, for me, that was a much more comfortable situation than being like, okay, and now strike this pose and now strike this pose. It wasn't modeling. It felt like acting that pictures were being taken of, you know? It so. did have that look. They looked like stills from a production. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what you want. When the cast director comes across your profile, you want them to look at it and go, oh, I can see that character in this situation. I can see that character in this situation. And then again, he was like, we need some that look a little bit like you that aren't all about character. So we got a couple that were more me much more comfortable sat round or leant up against the wall whatever he's just constantly taking pictures and then he goes through uploads all of them to the internet and you just go through them on a private browser pick out the ones you like then i sent them off to edwin my agent um and edwin and i then discussed for about two weeks which ones we we're gonna have because there was ones i wanted and he said i like them but you need these ones so of two weeks of deliberation uh we managed to get down to the final four and then and now we have them but um yeah it was but that's the thing he always wants your agent to be involved so um i i told him can you email them to me and edwin and he and i think if anybody's going to have a relationship with an agent um it should be that way your agent should be absolutely involved with your headshots with your showreel with everything you do i get a phone call from edwin once or twice a week we talk we discuss it even during lockdown while the industry has fallen to pieces he's been on the phone just to see how people are and i think if people are looking for agents and they and they don't have that relationship i feel like they're missing out on that this should be a friend as well as a colleague and and uh and alan definitely allows that relationship that three person relationship of the photographer the agent and the actor to come together that's fantastic i'm glad to hear that that's that's a fantastic relationship to have with the agent yeah that's yeah he, he's a good guy he's looking out for for his talent hey, well i wish you good luck with all of your um projects and it's always good to talk to you yeah take it easy brian thank you